Hey guys, I think you're gonna like today's episode. We're talking about metrics and what to measure. And I think you're gonna be shocked by the one metric that can be more dramatic than the scale. And welcome to Your Inspired Life. I'm your host, Amy Hager, where I share my expertise as a registered dietitian and health coach of 20 years to help keep you motivated to stay on track every day. And this week, we are working on week three of our Shape Up for Summer accountability program. And really, we're talking about metrics. It's critical to know how you're making progress as you're making your way through a program. So let's get into it. So since we are now three weeks into the Shape Up for Summer challenge, it can be a really optimal time to be checking your progress by looking at metrics. So what do I mean by metrics? These are the things that you can actually measure. And a lot of times people are familiar with using the scale only as their one metric of success, which can be really tricky. It doesn't always tell the truth and it's not always accurate. Sometimes it can be unpredictable and can make you have doubts. So today I want to provide you with additional metrics that will help you determine the kind of progress that you're making in your program. So by the end of this video, you're going to have a whole handful of other metrics to be tracking to know that you're actually making progress, even if you don't feel like it. Well, let's get started. You might be wondering which metrics you should be tracking. A lot of times we just gravitate towards tracking our weight because the doctor said it was a good idea or we know that there's definitely some health outcomes associated with lowered weight. But having a variety of metrics to track is really important because it's going to increase your overall motivation in the program by showing you that you're making constant progress. And who doesn't want that? So I have six additional metrics that are worth tracking and you can write these down as we go. So feel free to use a one to 10 scale. It's okay if you don't have your starting number, you might just be able to recall from memory how it felt at the beginning of the program. All right, let's jump in. Okay, the first one is energy level. Okay, energy level. Rank that on a one to 10. How is your energy level today? And compare that to how your energy level was three weeks ago. The reason energy level is important to track is because it can change really quickly. Sometimes in the period of 24 hours, you can implement a quick change and in the next day, make progress and see the benefits. Next one is stress level. Same thing, you're ranking it on a one to 10. So as people tend to improve their health habits, they oftentimes notice a decrease in stress because they're eating better, they're sleeping better, they're, they're having an outlet for their stress with exercise. So stress can be one that comes along really quickly. And what about sleep? Sleep is another one that can improve just in a few days of taking better care of your health, eating better, not eating so late at night, getting good exercise. A lot of these translate into improvements in sleep. So definitely think about how things were about a month ago and now compare the numbers. What about mood? How has your mood been? Have you noticed more days feeling uplifted, fewer days feeling down in the doldrums? So same thing, rank it on a one to 10 scale. How is your mood today? And these can be things that fluctuate throughout the week, right? We're gonna have good days and bad days, but compare it on average to what you were scoring maybe three weeks ago or six weeks ago. And now how is your mood? Here's one that's probably gonna improve more if you're doing an exercise program, and that is strength and stamina. I grouped them together, but usually if you're doing exercise, you're gonna have improvements in strength and stamina of being able to make it through your workouts, make it through your day. And this can be really noticeable, especially at the two week mark. If you're being really, really consistent, it's not hard to see great increases and improvements in strength and stamina. And then the last one for the subjective is immunity and health symptoms. So this one can have this one can have a lot of subcategories, right? We all have different health issues, but if you're working on improving your diet, you might see improvements in your digestive system. You might see decreased headaches. You might see fewer allergies, on and on and on. You're, you're probably gonna see a lot of different kinds of improvements in your health symptoms, and you can include metrics that are less subjective that have solid numbers, such as blood pressure, blood sugars. They respond really quickly to diet changes in your health program. So considering all of those six different categories, that is quite a bit of potential to improve the quality of your life. And we haven't even talked about pounds on the scale, right? So it definitely gives you some sense of progress and purpose and focus of other things, other parts of your life really improving. Stuff that makes a huge difference on your day to day, not just pounds on the scale. I like to think of pounds on the scale as a side effect to all these other wonderful things changing in your life. But it's easy to fall into the trap 
If weight has been really important for you or it has been in the past and that's been your primary metric to track, it can be easy to get caught up in that and think that's the end all be all, right? Like that's the most important thing and that's the only thing that's making you a success or not, but um, it's not true. So I do have a couple more metrics that are worth tracking and I mentioned these before in a previous episode of recommendations from a dietitian of what else to track, especially if you're wanting to see changes in your body. And one of them is using a tape measure. Now this is my reference to earlier in the video about one of the things that can change the most and be more dramatic than what the scale can tell you. So here's my personal story, okay? It was several years ago and I was doing a similar shape up for summer type of program for myself that I designed and I'm changing my diet, I'm eating healthier, cutting back on the junk foods, and then I'm ramping up my exercise. I start lifting weights, I start doing lots of cardio, you know, I'm really doing a huge investment on the program. And weeks go by and the weight doesn't change and the weight doesn't change and the weight doesn't change. And at the end of six weeks, I'm starting to think there's something wrong. But then I remembered I'm also tracking my inches with a tape measure. So I go through, get all my measurements, and by the time I added it up, we were over six inches of body lost, right? Over six inches were lost, but only one pound on the scale down. So what does that tell you? It tells you that I completely changed my body. Six inches isn't nothing, right? That's, you've gotten smaller and you've gotten more toned. The reason why the pounds didn't change is because I was building up muscle that I had lost over the winter time. The bottom line is that the scale doesn't tell the whole story. And if you only use that as your tracking device, it can get discouraging when you're not seeing what you expect. So you have to tell the whole story. So definitely use the tape measure as another metric if you're looking for changes in your body shape. Now the other one that goes along with that is looking at a body composition tool. That one show where I recommended the handheld body fat analyzer, that's one way to do it. And now there are so many fancy scales that you can use. You can track your fat, your muscle, and your water and, and see how those are changing over time as well. And if you go old school, there's one more way to go where you don't need any equipment at all. And that is just using your clothes as a guide, as a gauge to how much your body has changed over time. So do you have any clothes that are kind of like a gold standard of being the size that you want to be, being that fit level that you wanted to be maybe five years ago, and you're still holding on to them because you're remembering that you want to get back there. So how are those fitting? You don't need any special equipment. Like I said, it's just a certain pair of pants or maybe it's a shirt, but that can be a guide as well. It's not as much of a number, it's not very specific, but it doesn't lie. You can cheat the scale by dehydrating yourself or just cutting your carbs to zero and you can really make that scale, uh, you can really manipulate the scale, but you're not gonna fit into those pants, okay? That's something that is a product of effort over time. So don't discount the power of your old clothes telling you the truth of how much your body has changed. Now I've got one more area where you can track metrics. Actually, it's four different areas and you might feel free to add your own. You might not have a beginning number, but you might be able to assign one based on memory, right? So here are the four areas, and these are areas that I noticed with my clients completely changed by the time they achieved their goals. So the first one is confidence. At the beginning of any program, you might not feel very confident in your ability to execute. You might not feel confident in your ability to, to go the distance, so to say. So usually after several weeks, people's confidence increases quite a bit. So there's confidence. And then knowledge. As you're going through any program, you're being, you're picking up tips, you're picking up knowledge and facts and data all along the way. So at the beginning, you might feel like you're not sure about what's gonna work for you or what's appropriate, what you should be doing. But then by the end, you're kind of, you're noticing a big increase in your knowledge. You're like, oh yeah, I feel like I really know what I'm doing now. So definitely give yourself a knowledge score. Consistency, this one is huge. I think the benefit of a program is that it really gets you into practice, really practicing, really practicing your habits, practicing your actions, especially if you're doing them on a daily basis. And the consistency score for people can go up dramatically. Like people are just here and there and sporadic at the beginning, but then really nailing down a pattern and a routine that becomes part of the lifestyle. And that's what we're going for, right? And then the last one is self-awareness. This one is huge, this one is mindfulness. And this is what I see a lot of people struggle with is that they're not really catching themselves in the act of bad habits or catching themselves in the act of not following through with their plan. But now folks, as you bring more attention to your habits and as you get more practiced with mindfulness, you really build that 
skill of self-awareness. You know what you're doing. So self-awareness is a big player in habits. It's a big player in changing habits. So that one's really valuable as well. That's not the end of the list. There's probably a bunch more. You might have one on the top of your mind that is something that's changing for you that I didn't list. So, so if that's something that's coming up, definitely drop in the comments if you're thinking of a, another type of metric, like a subjective metric that's worth tracking. But I definitely find these some of the most common and they're really the most effective to really give you a sense of progress and change because sometimes waiting for that final number on the scale to change can be a long wait. So you gotta have fun along the way. Drop a comment below if this has been useful. Just type yes with an exclamation point, like yes, metrics. We're gonna track metrics. So you've got plenty to work on this week. So tomorrow I'll just drop in with a helpful food prep and recipe. And that way you can have that to add to your week. And then we'll jump into some more content on Wednesday about what to expect and what's normal as far as metrics go. You know, you see reality TV and then you got your life. So I'm gonna go more about what to expect, what's normal, what, what are good numbers, okay? We're gonna get into that on Wednesday. So for the rest of today, enjoy tracking the metrics of your choosing and definitely write a yes in the comments below if you're planning on tracking your metrics this week. Guys, take care, have a great week, and we'll see you tomorrow.